Hello, everyone. The Drunken Confessions, episode 64. Woo. Yes, we're back after a week's break, and we have our host, Amy, her husband, Jeremy, and the enabler, Dave. How's everyone doing tonight? We are doing fabulous. How are you doing, Cass? I'm actually doing really well. How's, uh, how's your healing process for you listeners that don't know or don't remember? Uh, Cass just went through surgery. That's why we weren't with you last week. Yes. She got her insides torn out. <laughs> right. Yeah, I got parts of me removed. So it's all good, though. Um, that's why I did, like, the jail cell thing behind me. Because I, I feel like I now that I'm starting to feel better, I kind of feel like... You know, a little cage in health, um, jail. Little, little stir I'm crazy. I'm telling you, I am. I'm going totally stir crazy. So, the jail of but, healing. What? The the jail of healing. I'm telling you, and 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 it's true because when you because you gotta be super careful because right now is the time when you can really hurt yourself, or so I'm told. So. Yeah, I've been I've been warned, so I've been uh, taking it easy and. I feel like better, I said, so I'll stop taking my medicine. I actually um, haven't been taking much medicine at all because I found out I have reactions to almost every single painkiller on the market. The only thing I can take is Motrin. I mean, I guess on the upside, you don't have to worry about an opioid addiction. I never, <laughs> never have to worry about this that. True. Yeah, and that's what I, I even said that to the nurses. I'm like, well. At least don't have to worry about being a pill popper because that's never going to happen. So, well, well, welcome back, Cass. And here okay, is to you. Wednesday night drunken confessions. Cheers yeah. to everybody out there. Now, an alcoholic that may happen, but not a pill popper. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. That's I told you from day one. At least you're honest. Always, always. <laughs> All right, so, note. I had a funny um, story that made us um, kind of go with tonight's topic. So okay. I hear the story of a mom of a young daughter asked, the young daughter asks mom, where do babies come from? A little girl's like eight, say? eight years old, nine years old around there. The mom says, okay. well, there's a magical um, wish that you make. Or whatever, just a BS story, right? I, I can't remember exactly what she said, but it was just, I'm sitting here going, really? She's going to Google this. She has a tablet. She's going to Google it. Um, so it kind of brought to me, like, tonight is sex education brought to you by Drunken Confessions. Ooh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, so my well, question I feel like we should apologize in advance for this one. Yeah, so um, any parents out there. We should apologize in advance for all of our, all of our podcasts. That should Usually. be part of our intro, actually. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's a great idea. We need to redo our intro and put, you know. Well, we are missing we apologize Steph tonight. For the following material. <laughs> yeah, right. So we are missing Steph tonight. Um, she had, she's feeling a little under the weather. She's not COVID or anything like that. She's just feeling a little rough today so um what when i thought about this idea and this question it was because stephanie and i are not parents right so i wanted to get our views and then you two being parents your views but the question is is at what age do you talk to kids about the birds and the bees like the real talk so one of you parents can answer first like have you well i know cass you're you're a grandma, so like. Actually, just a new grandma as of uh, Monday yes. night. Congratulations. Monday, actually, Monday morning. Yes, I became a grandma for the third time. So. Well, your uh, future uh, uh, Social Security is expanding now. <laughs> You're going to smack Jeremy when I see you next. <laughs> and, and the nice thing is, you can't hit me back. And actually, That's unfortunately, it, Social Security appears to be disbanding. That's the. <laughs> right? Damn it, I put into that. Do I get any of it back? <laughs> no, well, we have um, uh, Dave who's got younger kids still. So uh, I'm kind of curious where you guys stand on that. So I had uh, the whole talk uh, with my daughter last year uh, when she was 12. 
Um, and, and I figured that was right about the right time. I had a milder version of the talk with my son, who's 10. Um, you know, just like, you know, the intro stuff. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, just getting a little bit more serious and just like letting them know that honestly, when they have questions, it's okay to come ask. Now, was that um, talk because they asked a question or did you just feel like it was time because of a certain reason? Um, and more time. I mean, I didn't want it to be <laughs> like when I was, uh, so I was 15 um, when uh, my stepfather decided it was going to be the, a, a good time to have a talk with me. And, and I literally... Uh, broke out laughing and clapped him on the back and said, "Yeah, you're you're too late, but thanks. That's cute." Uh, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, no. So I, like, I I did want it to be that kind of situation, and, and you know, and again, I do. I know. I mean, I know the kind of TV shows my kids watch. I know, you know, the kind of you know things they pay attention to online and that kind of stuff. So I'm I'm not stupid. Um, and so it was just you know, at, at no, it just seemed like it was the right time. Awesome. Cass, what about you? Your kids are grown now. They're married. Yeah. They, they have kids uh, we own. know none of your kids are virgins yet. Anymore. Right. Um, um, I never got the talk growing up. I was the youngest of the six. I never got the talk. Um, but as for my girls, you know, strangely enough, um, my ex-mother-in-law really wanted to have that talk with them. And, and I was with her when she had it, but she really wanted to talk to him about it. And I wasn't sure why, but I let her, you know, I'm like, okay, you can, you can have a talk with them, you know, both of the girls. So I did, I let her talk to each one of them, probably when they were around 10, 11 with girls, because, you know, you want, you want to have the talk with them before they start their period. And then my son, I kind of left it up to my ex-husband at the time to talk to him, but as he he got a little bit older, and after my divorce, I had more talks with him about things like STDs, using protection, things like that is when I came in and, you know, when I thought, okay, he's going to, he looks like he's got a, his first girlfriend, it's time to have that talk. So that's when I came in and had that talk with him. So and that was probably when he was about 15, 14, 15. What about you, well, Amy? Well, this what is another think? reason why I'm very thankful I don't have kids because I don't know how I would have that talk. I, I, I really don't. I guess until you go through it, you can't give any advice or right. anything like that. Um, however, I do feel I am grown. I am a lot around a lot of people with kids. I, and because I never got the talk. Yeah, I learned, either. I'm still learning hanging out with you guys. I mean, for God's sake, <laughs> <laughs> there's still a lot of things I, I mean, don't know. <laughs> if you just wanted to call this episode educating Amy, we could have. It, it, it almost was. It, Believe me, it was like educating it, it, Amy. It's going to be, I think. And, um, but yeah, no, I feel like when kids start asking questions or you're monitoring what they're watching and what they're Googling, that means that they're starting to wonder and you should really just take that seriously and talk and mm -hmm. depending on the age i mean how how deep you get into the conversation of course is to each their own but right. I, I don't feel like if a if a child comes up to you and asks you a question over the age of seven you should kind of go into a little bit of right and not to make believe asking. stuff <laughs> yes if they're old enough to start asking the questions i think they're old enough to start having some genuinely honest answers with them mm -hmm. that's kind of what, how i feel about it high five to us we don't have to deal with that <laughs> <laughs> no. yay <laughs> go team that's pretty funny. And, th and then and then her dog gets knocked up and she's paranoid nope right. they're fixed <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what? Kind of, I am too now. I, I got spayed over there. Yeah, you are. <laughs> okay, so we kind of um, answered the two questions I had, yeah. except Jeremy didn't get to, the second question I had is, did your parents ever talk to you about it? Jeremy didn't get to speak on that. So Jeremy, did you ever have the talk or did you just kind of figure it out? No, I've never had the talk. Uh, it was mostly probably started with the cousins and figuring and learning about stuff and people telling each other about stuff they'd seen. Uh, really, uh, I, I think the talk should have been around probably fifth, sixth grade. Sixth I grade, know my best one, told sixth me. grade is basically when the spark started with some of the, the, the people in my grade, 
And then once you hit seventh grade, it was just ramping up from there. <laughs> Game on. Well, there's nothing my else school to do decided in it was anywhere between seventh grade or twelfth grade. Depends on when you want to take your health class. <laughs> now, see, that was the funny thing is so health class for us, and I will never forget this poor woman. Um, it was seventh grade, and it was, she was a first year teacher, and she had the unfortunate name for being a health teacher teaching sex ed to a bunch of seventh graders her name was miss moore <laughs> nice. and, and it was hilarious watching her try to deal with us uh i mean just you know the 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 sarcasm the laughing the snick the snickering the jokes the yeah i i was i was stunned that she didn't run out of the room screaming at any point in time yeah, you know, my I, teacher is pretty much the same way. Um, super conservative, super everything is just done right, not not a, no harm to anybody, and just and all of a sudden she's got to try to talk about this subject that she's tiptoeing around, especially in the nineties because they're changing stuff up. During the nineties, they're changing some have. of the stuff on the way things had to be done. So. You mean the education part, right? Yeah, but <laughs> school. Yeah, I'm talking about what, what the teachers and no, the no, Amy. Sex, sex completely changed in the '90s. It was it was a whole different. The '80s were so much better. It was it was just yeah. No. Oh I like gosh. that every no, ten years for the teachers. It, I mean, nowadays, how what is it, fourth grade because of social media? I hope not. Right. Well, I don't know. But, so. I don't know. I never even had health ed. I, maybe it's because I went to Catholic school. We just didn't have it. So. I couldn't imagine getting health ed from a nun. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I'm kind of glad Thank they didn't know. have it when I went to school. <laughs> so Amy, do we have any uh, drunken confessions that we could do a quick one of? Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> what just jumped out? I have, I have to share the breaking news alert that I just got on my phone because this is hilarious to me. Um, Trump is uh, demanding uh, drug tests be administered before the debates with Biden. <laughs> drug tests for like him and Biden? Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he said he noticed a, a remarkable improvement uh, in Biden's debating around March uh, and, and, and he wants to make sure there, there are no uh, substances involved. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, what if we're to pump him up with some steroids? <sighs> All right, so when was the know. last? Any, uh, yeah, so drunken confessions. When is the last time you accidentally threw somebody under the bus? Not physically. Oh, oh not physically. Okay. Oh, okay. Accidentally? Uh, yeah, when did you accidentally like just open your mouth and you threw somebody under the bus and you were like, oh, crap, I didn't mean to do that? They do it all the time on purpose. Well, we know. That's why I added the accidentally, because it was a little tougher question for you, Cass. It does. It, I'm trying to think, because I do it all the time, but never accidentally. Um, I, I honestly, I genuinely can't remember what the specific, like, I'm trying to remember what the exact phrasing was, but it was last Thursday night at Whiskey, um, and I said something, and, and, and Calvin actually turned to me and said, oh, thanks for throwing me under the bus, man. Um, oh, wait, no, that, no, that was Sunday. Um, yeah, so yeah, it would have been then. Um, I honestly can't remember anything in particular. I'm not talking to anybody right now except for you two. So have I thrown? <laughs> right. Stuff? And I don't think I've thrown anybody under the bus. So. Yeah, no, I, uh, I don't think so. No, I do it on purpose all the time, but accidentally, not really. As I say, usually it's on purpose with me. Oh, I always do it on purpose. It's hilarious. Because <laughs> I'm funny like that. <laughs> what about you guys? You know, I guess a little while back when uh, at one of the, uh, the weekend parties, we had someone uh, trying to accuse people of being in a certain way, and then on the way home, I was like, mm, uh, wait, what? That happened? Oh, because they were hiding their stuff. <laughs> from everybody else <laughs> oh mm. i just left over I'm like that ain't no that should never happen that way because this is going on in the background <laughs> exactly i don't think that was accidentally you were like flat out though you gotta love projection <laughs> all right so 
Since it's sex education night, brought to you by Drunken Confessions. Wear a condom. Oh my God. Um, we have some sex terms 101. And Cass and I Googled some of these last night because honestly, I didn't know what half of them were. And so Cass's great idea was trying to get me to guess what they were before she told me what the answer was. Mm -hmm. See, that you, that you, was number one. I was like, that you should have been that, recording. That's what I, right. yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, we should have just did it that way to begin with because have. it was hilarious. It what was. I thought it was. Um, so, well, you can still tell them what you thought it was. Yeah, I will. So, uh, sex term 101. Number one was pearl necklace. <laughs> yeah, he had no idea. Um, don't spit your drink all over your microphone. I'm sorry. I'm what did you think it was? Oh, yeah. What did I, I thought it was anal beads. Take <laughs> around your neck when you're done. I don't know. It makes sense. I, I mean, I sense. I can see the logic that got you there. I, I was I, using my brain. I, I can see the logic that got you there. Okay, thank you. Because of the beads part, I guess. But then I explained to her, no, that is when a man ejaculates around your neck and chest area. Excuse me. But, you know, I also wanted to bring up the fact that for anybody who's watching or listening um, and you're on, like, Tinder or whatever, I found out there's so many more things than Tinder out there. Um, which is brand new to me too. Um, no, not that I'm on it. Come on now. Uh, Jerry's like, whoa, wait a minute. I mean, hey, apparently Jerry Falwell can give you some like, Um, but I'm like, okay, so if anybody asks you if you're interested in a pearl necklace, it's not jewelry. Okay. That's my advice on those dating websites. Yeah. They're not trying to give you a gift. No. Well, I mean... Okay. It depends on your point of view. Oh, ew. <laughs> Give her the gift of life and she spilled it on the floor. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. You married him. Uh, I can't even right now. All right, what's number two? Cass, do you have number a list? Two. Yeah, number I still two. have it. Well, okay. not, not your list. I have some of it. But I know okay, what number so two is. Okay, what's number two? Number two is impact play. Which I recently learned on Educating Amy, like, take four. I think it was, like, at the kink ball is when right. I learned what that was. So for our viewers, Jess, do you want to um, explain for anybody who does not know what impact play is? Why don't you explain, Amy? Because I explained the last one. Oh, okay. Uh, so impact play is, like, spanking, uh when you bring in like the the whips the paddles you know all those things that make me uncomfortable to talk about <laughs> you mean it's, do you mean it's not when the, the forehead's bouncing off the wall or the headboard or the bed i mean no, that's, that's, that's called a concussion <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the impact play is more intentional in nature right, right. slap that on <laughs> All right, and then number three is CBT. Yes. Dave, I want to know if you know what CBT is. I mean, that could be like five or six different things. In what context? Well, it could be a couple of different things, but let's say in the context of kink. Uh, probably cognitive behavior. Somebody interrupted him. Yeah. He so, was wrong. Well, so he wasn't wrong. Because he was going to say cognitive behavior therapy, behavior therapy. Oh, yes. Okay. So, but he got interrupted, obviously. <laughs> All right. So that's one. So and that's one of the meaning. So I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> I know. So that's one of the, um, the terms, but we also discovered it also stands for cock and ball torture. Yes, which I think is a self-explanatory. Yeah, I don't think yeah. we need to go into detail about that. For um, sure. It is what it is. So moving on. Uh, sorry, uh, apparently, there, apparently there was a turtle. There was a turtle in the pool. Oh, he's in the right spot. And that's not a euphemism. 
<laughs> that's not a sex term? A turtle in the pool? I feel like that could be a sex I'm term. Use it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, one Man of the, the sex boat. terms that we were... Man in the boat, turtle in the pool, be... whatever. We're going to actually have that on one of our, our episodes. We're going to do sex terms like that one night. Just because I did oh, one like for Amy. Uh, she wouldn't really. let me... She wouldn't let me add it to the list because when I told her what it was, she's like, yeah, no, we're not saying that on the okay, show. Okay, then go ahead. Add it to the list. Go ahead. You br- when you bring it up, talk about oh, it, girl. We're going to add it to, we're going to do a whole, a whole episode on that. Well, I might be sick that was, night. And the, and the term was felching, oh. uh, but I'm not going to tell you what the definition was. Oh, I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> I know. Damn. I didn't know what it was. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. Anyway, so sex term 101. Number so, four is yeah. pegging. Is everybody familiar with that term? Yeah. I only am because of one of the morning shows I listen to talk about it all the time. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That's how Amy learned about this. That's one. how I learned what pegging was. On a morning show. So yep. thing, to say it on a morning show, I'm sure it's okay if we describe it on our show. Which yeah. is using a strap on to get. I only really know about it because my friend, because of a friend down in DC. So yeah. What? No, my yeah, friend. A... Uh, yeah, well, I guess I should clarify that statement. Uh, yeah, no, my my friend Don uh, used to talk about uh, how she basically needed to keep her boyfriend in line uh, by doing that every now and then. Oh, okay. All right, all right. like, wow, you're oversharing tonight, aren't you, Dave? I was like, yeah, I was like, I, I really realized I needed to clarify that one, yeah. I'm like, his, <laughs> you know, his, sinus medica- his sinus medication, medication mixed with his Medi- alcohol is really... <laughs> my medication. His medication. It's magical, it's my medication. <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> um, <laughs> on that note, let's uh, break up this... Uh, and do another drunken confession. Oh, okay. Let's. Have you ever wanted to legally change your name and why? I actually wanted to change it back to what I what it was when I was born. Yeah. Really? So you like, did, you weren't born with David? Uh, no, no. So I my uh, so I think I've told you guys the story. My parents divorced when I was six months old. Uh, my mom remarried when I was two. Uh, and so like, I didn't even know my stepfather wasn't my father till I was 11. Um, but I was born David Robert Love Jr. Uh, and, and I, I just thought love was a much cooler last name. And so it is a cool last name. Plus you take the D from David and the R from Robert and and you have Dr. Love. And I thought that'd be, Oh gosh. Hey Amy, what was it? No, it wasn't Dr. Love. Um, what was it? King, King of Love? The king of love is who the we king met. Of love. I had the king of love all over me one night at the bar. Yeah. It was hilarious. Already then. Yeah. Yeah, that's a story for uh, another day. Another day. Wasn't that my night before my wedding? No, that was just us drinking, day drinking, and going out for mimosas at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> and, uh, don't, don't try to make it all fancy. That's, that's yeah, all. Yeah, it was nothing fancy. <laughs> <laughs> it was Cass and Amy being Cass and Amy. Right. Um, so I've always wanted to change my legal name because I feel like Amy is so boring. But I never thought of anything that I would want to be called. So I just kind of st- stuck with Amy. So, but I, Jeremy, I, Jeremy, Jeremy, there's your in. Just start calling her by the wrong name and see which one she likes most. You know, Dave... <laughs> Gotta hold on to the two ponytails. You, I like you do, a divorce 101. You do remember we're hanging out on Saturday evening. And I can totally remember this on Saturday when I pitch slap you. <laughs> Just saying. Pointing it out there. Fine. We are hanging out Saturday. I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually going to be have you ever out. Wanted, Cass, have you ever wanted to change your name? No. Um. You didn't want to be Kathy? <laughs> Everyone knows I hate the name Kathy. I just do. Well, Kate, um, no offense Katie. to the Kathys out there. I've never been a Kathy. Um, given the Apple. fact that my name's Kathleen, but I've always gone by Cass, which I like the name Cass a lot. I think yeah. it's a lot of character to it and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I've always liked Cass. So, 
Do you I think you would ever legally I mean, well, change your name? Well, my family changed it. What? Would you ever change your name legally to Cass? No, I like the fact that I'm Kathleen, but I'm also Cass. Um, now, I've thought about, you know, I'm wishing I had kept my maiden name. Because my maiden name is much cooler than either one of my married names. Well, <laughs> I could totally comment, but I'm not going to. What? Galetti, Galetti has a lot of character. People know you're Italian, things like that. So Galetti was great. Although mm. it, it got old listening to people tell me all the time when I was growing up, oh, you don't look Italian. Well, aren't you a rocket scientist? Thank you. You know, I was really happy when I married Jeremy and I finally got to change my name. From Hornifeld? Yeah, oh, I hated that. It was Hornfeld, but uh, yeah, never have to be called Hornifeld again. Well, I still call it you. Now, now I'm center of your world. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> wow, is that the pickup line Jeremy used to get you? Oh no, no. he used to the Ron Jeremy thing. Yeah, he, yeah, Ron Jeremy. Yeah. What about you, Jeremy? <laughs> Jeremy, you ever you? wanted to... Oh, hell yeah. My name is Jeremy. And I always got called Jeremiah when I was a little kid, drove me up a wall. And then center is fun to play with now. But but when you're in, like, middle school and stuff and you're in sports, all of a sudden you, you that's the only position you ever get is the center position. And uh, a lot of times uh, they call me middle, not Jeremy Middle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And then every time I tell someone my name, like security guards or anything like that, going to work, the, the first uh, re three replies I get when I say my last name is what? What? <laughs> like, like center fielder. Oh, oh okay. Oh. Like so left, spell right. Spell S, right? Not, no. <laughs> not left, not right, center. The center. <laughs> oh, and Facebook. Can't do Facebook. Oh yeah, Facebook. Flag, yeah. Flag those corporation. They won't have that. They want money and all that bullshit. Okay, so going back to our um term sex terms one oh one. We are now yes. on number five, which uh, is called queening. This one I actually didn't know. I did not know this one. Dave, do you know what queening means? I'm <laughs> I've heard it used two different ways. Um, one in a in a straight in a heterosexual way, one in a homosexual way. So I'm not I'm not sure which way you're going here. Well, educate us and give us both definitions because I only have one. Uh, so in a heterosexual way, that's typically a girl sitting on a guy's face. And that's the one I knew. I found out. Well, I didn't know. I found out. <laughs> And then the other would just be a guy doing the same thing. So, oh, okay, okay. So, sitting on the girl's face. Um, no, if it's homosexual, then a guy would. I'm not joking. Be girl's face. I was just gonna shitty. No, nobody got your joke, <laughs> Cass. So. Nobody's, nobody's, nobody's listening. Nobody's. All right. Next question. Next term. Um. Well, everybody knows this one. Even, uh, even not I. Not everybody. Well, not okay, everybody. I I knew this one because so Amy automatically assumes if she knows it, everybody, everybody knows, knows it. it. I mean, that's it, not the worst assumption to make. Let's be. Let's no, know. And, and chances are she's right. But yeah, so scissoring. Oh, I mean, anybody who's been a South Park fan for any length Thank of time, you. Knows that, yeah. That's what I almost just said. I was like, anybody who's watched South Park knows what this is. Oh, scissor me timbers. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Then we have, um, edge play, which. What did you say? You thought that was. Me? No, I knew that yeah. one. Did you know that one? Yeah, I knew that one because you guys talked told me. Oh, okay. And it makes sense. So, like, once I knew it, it does make sense. So, edge play is when you're like taking it to the edge, like, um, like knives. The needles yeah the choking until you're about to pass out bringing in mm -hmm. knives needles uh burning i believe it's on the list right am i wrong i could be wrong well no it can be anything could be on the list if it takes you if it's if it's um something that you know is 
I guess I want to say what is what's the word I'm looking for on the edge um, pushing the boundaries yeah. yeah pushing the boundaries so not not to be confused with edging then huh? what but, okay, I, so yeah I mean there's there's because edging is just basically bringing somebody oh, repeatedly to the brink of orgasm and then and then pulling back Okay, oh, that one! one. I, I thought that was um. Oh. Yeah, I never heard of what you said. Uh, no, like, oh, that no. one I've okay. always known as um. <laughs> give me a minute. That's a couple different meanings. I have another term for that one that I I. Um, being a bitch. That's what the no. <laughs> wow, Dave! Ouch! No. I'm hurt. No, so that's it, a term when the, your person is uh, got an attitude yeah, and just, um, just two different people, <laughs> two different, two different. Well, and uh, just for the record, number eight is figging, and it says hashtag cast to explain figging. Does figgy pudding? I was gonna say, I mean, is this going with some sort of Christmas pudding thing? <laughs> no, Dave, have you ever heard of it? Probably, but maybe uh, in your weird kink areas. Um. Figging basically refers to the act of peeling a piece of ginger and sticking it up your butthole. And it's very painful, burning, stinging sensation. And nope. some people enjoy the um, act of pain in their butt, pain in the anus, pain in the ass. So it's become a thing. And, and it doesn't have to necessarily be ginger, but I guess that's how it started is that was considered and it was also actually back in the um way back in the greek and roman empires it was considered a form of uh corporal punishment now see here's what i gotta <laughs> you know that corporal punishment now is turned into a kink oh, well, well, of course, of course, of course there's other every, every, everything we hated as kids we now love as adults like naps and spanking let's not let's not fool anyone right um but like my, my whole thing is at so who's the guy that's or the whoever the person that's looking at their spice rack uh and and going let's see uh cumin no two on the nose let's let's not use that one uh turmeric no 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 ginger let's let, let's try cramming some ginger up there yeah, i want to know and, who and, discovered and, that or and cinnamon but, but then again then again some people like sticking things up their butt and maybe they just like like the shape of it and then once they stick it up there they're like oh this was <laughs> I immediately regret this decision. I mean, you know, so off topic, but this is where Dave was uh, coming from. Who's the guy who thought of that? I also want you guys to know that um, where the, like, the fake vanilla flavor comes from, right? It's from beaver's anus glands, their anal glands. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really want to know who's who discovered that and why were you playing with anal glands on a beaver and that poor beaver, like that always bothered me. <laughs> I just had to throw that milk? out there. What about the guy that first discovered milk? Yeah, the awkward, how do you explain that one? Yeah, the awkward moment where the guy who discovers <laughs> drinking milk has to explain what he's doing to the cow. Yeah. Oh man, these poor animals. And you did what to who? <laughs> well, it's a you know, hey. That chicken just basically shit something out of its body. Let's let's give that a shot. Let's yeah. Let, let's see what happens when we cook that up. Yeah. I'm gonna eat that. I'm I'm gonna eat that. It, it's probably <laughs> like crazy. it's probably like bar shots. I'm like I'm like almost all food probably started as a dare at some point. Hey, <laughs> hey, grog, chicken shoot white thing out of butt. <laughs> you eat. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, five rocks, grog eat. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. Yeah. All right, on that note, next one. Uh, next, next one is uh, not really that hard to explain. It's aftercare. Actually, unfortunately, it's not that hard to explain, but it's something that not a lot of people are very familiar with. Really? That's sad. Well, so the, the, the issue that you have is um, an awful lot of uh, chads went out and bought a riding crop off Amazon after watching Fifty Shades of Grey uh, and, and didn't really understand the, what aftercare is. And, and that's part of the issue is because, is, is like, yeah, I mean, OK, BDSM can be a blast and all that fun stuff. But like it, it doesn't just stop when you stop. Like they, they, there could have been some pretty heavy shit going on and you need to make sure that the person that you're with is okay. Right. 
So that is what aftercare is for anybody um, dabbling into that world. Make sure aftercare is a huge part of it. Yes. And that is educating sex education brought to you by drunk confessions well, and, and that's <laughs> but i i did uh there was a show that i did uh god i can't remember which one of our shows it was but had a dominatrix on um and and it's so, okay for, actually there's a, there's a good corollary to your ginger story um one of her clients uh <laughs> wanted to have um her slice up jalapenos um and then put them in his urethra that's worse than ginger up the butt. Yeah, that's that was that was quite entertaining, and so that was one of the. So like we were yakking, and and I forget how the conversation got there, um, but she said, you know, how do you, you know, they they started talking about like how do you get, you know, how do you get involved in the BDSM scene and that kind of stuff, and I said, oh well, I, I said honestly, I said that as, if you ever meet somebody who claims to be an adom, be a dom, the first thing you should always ask them is, okay, well, what are your thoughts on aftercare and how do you usually do it and that kind of stuff. And if they can't, like, if you, if you get a what, like, if you get a Sony dog, or like, they don't know it, it, it move, move along. That's, that's not someone you want to be involved with at all, ever. Amateur. That's a, that's but I'm going to keep that in mind, though. I'm going to tell people, you know what? Go fig yourself. <laughs> Go fig yourself. <laughs> I mean, it kind of makes the whole figgy pudding lyric a little bit creepy. I'm not going to lie. It, yeah, it does. <laughs> I'll never, I'll never listen to that again the same way, right. ever. Um, okay, so number 10 is... Yay, Bukaki. I like this one. Bukaki. <laughs> I, you, you, want to, you want to clarify that? Come on, Nate. Oh, yeah. Say it right. Or, or you want to just leave it, or you want to just leave that hanging out there? You, you didn't yeah. say it right. You got to go, Bukaki. Well, since Cass is all about it, she can clarify. Clearly. <laughs> no, 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 Amy. Please. By all means, tell us what Bukaki is. <laughs> I'm good. We can leave that. I'm not. No. You know what? Google it. <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ! It, it's it's when uh, more than one person is coming on uh, on a single individual. Usually, usually it's a bunch of guys and a girl. Mm-hmm. Bukaki. <laughs> Sorry, I just like saying the word. It's a fun I really word need a to shot. say. At this point of the show, is I should have had liquor out here. All right, tell me. I did it even last night. I was doing it too. I was in there walking around going, Bukaki. It's just fun to say. She'll say it for like another week, like just out of the blue. Watch. <laughs> I, I guarantee you. Um, okay, number 11 is docking. <laughs> Never understood it, but I, whatever. More power to you if you enjoy it. I don't get it either. So it's when you make penises kiss, <laughs> and then. Yeah, I was going to say there's more than that. I know, but first they have to kiss. <laughs> and, and, and then they have to wear each other's and, turtlenecks, yeah. And then. <laughs> and then. <laughs> so okay. Yeah, so basically then, one, then, of then, them, then. one of them, at least one of them has to have a turtleneck. And they yeah. share their turtleneck with the other. Something. <laughs> they share their turtleneck with the other one, kind of like a Chinese. I, I thought this was going to be the <laughs> '80s metal band Dokken. I was totally wrong. I had uh, <laughs> I totally misunderstood where this was going. I, uh... No, there's yeah. a G on that one. Um, okay, so on that note, before we get to our last and final one, let's do another drunken confession. Okay, what is, bless. All right, what is? The funniest thing you've recently done while drunk or high? Talk about docking. <laughs> the funniest. Funny. Oh. The um, funniest thing you've done. Okay, like funny to yourself or funny to other people? It, anything, you know what? Anything that you think is funny. Like even if you were like drunk by yourself and you did something or thought of something and whatever. God, I, I I feel like I should have a list ready, but it's it's the recent the last I, I yeah I, I don't know what the last thing I would have done was. Okay, well I'll start it off with I'll start it off with the funniest thing I've done while drunk recently. So drank a little too much, walking down the hallway, 
tripped over my own damn feet, nobody around, and I literally, like, tripped, like, not just once, but, like, five times, like, scooby doo <laughs> <You're> tripping. Try- <laughs> Like, picture Scooby-Doo feet, like... Right. I was going to say, did you have the little... Yeah. (laughs) However, I did not fall and hurt myself, so I did not have to tell anybody until this moment. So, but I laughed, and then I ducked into the bathroom because I heard Jeremy coming through the back door, and I was laughing so hard, and I didn't want him to know what I just did, so I ducked in the bathroom to finish laughing at myself. (laughs) So... That's my funniest thing I've done recently. <laughs> so I, I, and okay, so that, that triggered one for me. So I was, uh, I was home alone late last week and had gone out for a couple drinks, came back home, had a couple more, uh, let the dogs out. Uh, Scooter was being a pain in the ass and didn't want to come back in. Uh, so I went out to find him. And so I was standing like right by the pool when he came running out of nowhere and basically jumped at me. And, and without thinking, I took a step back. And and fell in the pool. <laughs> and you fell in the pool. Yep. Do you have a camera That's system amazing. in here? Do you have an outside camera system, Dave? No, 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 there is there is no camera. How do you system? not have an outside camera system? <laughs> no. Nope, and why isn't this caught on video? Oh my god, that's amazing! I love it. So yeah, that was that was that was sheer genius on my part. All right, Cash, Jeremy. Have Jeremy go next because I'm still thinking. So is he. <laughs> uh, maybe mine's got, I'll, I'll mind be the uh, first time I mowed the lawn with my tractor. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had to be lawn. It took like 10 minutes to mow now. Uh, nice. I was, see, I was going to go with having an entire conversation with a guy at Temple Bar having no idea you were being hit on the entire time. That was, that was hilarious. Oh, no, <laughs> he, knew, he, knew. he knew he was being hit on. He didn't care. Oh. He was enjoying the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and Cass? You know, I would have to say I'm trying to think. I, I'm having so much trouble thinking about this. But... Huh. Um, I have to I have to go with the time that we were all in my garage just going back years, Amy. And I spilled something I in front of me. I have pictures of that. I have pictures yes. of it. I yeah. spilled something and my garage floor is super slippery when it gets wet. And I spilled beer and I went to get up and I did like this like crazy foot shuffle thing, you know? Like three stooges foot shuffle in the slippery yeah, garage before I finally fell on my ass. You hit Scooby Doo feet and you fell on your ass. And I in, in a pile, <laughs> when I finally in, fell, in a pile of beer. And so I fell, my ass hit in, in the big pile of beer that I spilled. And then next thing you know, Amy's taking a picture of me while I'm sitting in beer, laughing my ass off. So that was speaking of that, if we get enough comments on this, I will share it with you. No. No. <laughs> we have we have to get fifty comments didn't we have the keg left video. over from my daughter's graduation party yes. isn't that the night we have to get 50 comments on this video and i will share that photo of cass on the <laughs> okay paper. 50 comments all right i i'll agree to that oh i'll right. I'll, 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 I'll rally the troops this will happen no no 50 comments a horrible this picture, picture will go on the comments under this video yeah. It was a horrible picture, but it was really funny. I did some major fancy footwork. Didn't know I was capable of. So, okay. So coming to the last part, the last sex term that we have, which I also think is very important for all you people on these uh, Tinders and dating apps, is if somebody asks you if you're into water sports. Dude, jet skiing is cool. (laughs) <laughs> that's what amy said i said water sports she goes jet skiing i'm like yeah no that's exactly what amy swear, said last night I swear she that's goes hilarious. jet skiing <laughs> just that's like the true story i was like jet skiing like water sports like jet skiing she, thinks, like, she thought it was like having sex on a jet ski she really <laughs> that's it's having sex on a waterbed amy that's that's what it is that's yeah uh, no oh, no well, that's, that's, no okay so again Anybody who asks you if you are into water sports, just say no. <laughs> and I, I mean, unless you know what it is and you're into it. 
All right, Amy, my sister-in-law is on our thing right now, like just constantly making comments like A, B, C, just to like try and get enough comments. So you share that stupid thing. Stephanie and I. <laughs> Excellent. I see what you're doing there, girl. <laughs> One person could be 50 comments. All right, so Jeremy, do you know what water sports is? Yes, it is. Uh, has a lot to do with pee. It's the golden shower. Mm -hmm. Golden yeah. showers are water sports. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not the kind Amy was thinking of. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was so funny. He was like, I know. So I was down. like, why? What's wrong with water sports? I love water sports. <laughs> I'll go on a jet ski all day long. See, I would be the person on one of those dating hookup apps going, oh, yeah, I love water sports. Yeah. So Amy would be the one that got peed out and be like, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. And then so she shows up at Mark Kelly's house. Me out on your jet ski. Yeah. So and then she shows up at a Mark Kelly's up. house. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so <laughs> I'm, not using my, I'm using this podcast for good and I'm educating all the people, all the Amy's out there. You're warping people's minds. No, I'm educating right. all the Amy's out there that you are prepared when people ask you these questions. Yes, we want you to know. It's so so next program. week. So <laughs> not, not, maybe, I'm doing maybe not. my service. <laughs> Maybe not next week, but the week after, we're going to come up with even more fun things. Like, we're going to tell you what things like belching are. Um, so, before we end this, Dave, I want to know, is there anything that you think that you could add to this sex 101 terms? That oh. people should be aware. We're not going into advanced therapy. I was, like, I was like, oh, there's a ton, but I'd say, yeah, let's just wait for part two. Yeah. Okay, so stay tuned for part two. Actually, I think part two will be next week. You learn about Becky. I like Becky. Oh yeah, we gotta talk about <laughs> Becky. Um, with with the good hair. See, they sometimes. don't even know. I know something <laughs> you don't know. Um, <laughs> so we'll we'll talk more on Saturday because we're going out Saturday. Yes, we are. We are looking forward to that day. Um, all right, so again, we miss Stephanie. I really wish she could have joined us tonight. I hope she's feeling better. Um, hopefully, we will. she'll be back next week. Right. Uh, she'll be able to add on to part two of Sex Education brought to you by Drunken Confessions. If you guys have anything that you think that we don't know or an awkward question you want to ask, we can be leave you anonymous. Uh, yes. You can message us privately, email us. However you want to get a hold of us, we'll we'll do all the Googling for you if we don't know the answer. But I'm pretty sure between Cass and Dave, we can find the answer. Um, for sure. Do you have anything I, else to add to I, I tonight? I drink and I know things. Dave, Dave knows things. <laughs> he Do you have anything Dave else to uh, I Actually, oh, what happened to that T-shirt I had that said that? All I think right, I got I'm drunk and know. gave it away to somebody. Not a clue. All right. Who oh, did I give that to? Okay, think about it on your own time. <laughs> um, <laughs> just saying, nobody cares to watch you think. Uh, so on that note, we're going to wrap up this episode of Drunken Confession. Thank you guys for tuning in, listening. We really appreciate you. Uh, remember... No drinking and driving. We got enough going on in the world. Be safe out there. Be responsible. And Cass, do you have our end of the night cheers ready? I do. I definitely do. Raise All right. Coffee. So raise your glass. Raise your bottle. Oh, yeah. Raise your for cheers. I want to see her have. try to rhyme hysterectomy. This is going to be great. Go. Damn, I should have. I could have. I could have rhymed uterus. I know I could have. Uh huh. Because it's new to us. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Missed, lost opportunity. <laughs> All right, guys. So may the best of your past be the worst of your future. Cool. Cheers. And on that note, next week we'll rhyme uterus. <laughs> All right. Again, uh, Cass and I will be on this chat privately for a little bit. So if you want to tune in, send us a message. We'll... We'll be not Keep messaging recording. so Amy can get her 50 messages and post pictures. I'll share me. that photo. 
<laughs> you really want to, don't you? I do. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again. We love you. Have a great night. Hey, everybody. Thanks again for listening to our show tonight. If you want more information, you can find it at facebook.com backslash my drunken confessions.